Hello there. Presented by the Atlas Strength Shop. This is the Atlas Nerds in Iron Podcast. Good evening and welcome to the Atlas Nerds in Iron Podcast. I am your host, Cameron Ray, and this is our beautiful co-host, Mr. Matthew Cavalier. How are you doing today, Matt? I'm doing great, Cam. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. So what you been up to today so far? Oh, today was my wife's grandpa's 81st birthday party. Damn. 81 years old, still so, kicking it. Did, so do you do 81 candles, or do you do the number, or did he even have a cake? What did he do? We had a cake with 81 on it, and okay. then we had a, a big 8-1 balloon on each side of him. Could you imagine how mean it would be to make a senior citizen blow out 81 individual candles in one blow? It would probably set off the fire alarm. Yeah. Like, imagine if that's how Grandpa goes. <laughs> Trying to blow out trying 81 to blow out candles. His birthday just, cake. His heart just. Ah. Wow, this uh, this podcast got off to a really dark start right off the bat. Sorry, Mr. Roy. Nothing personal. I'm sure he's a great guy. Oh, yeah, he's a great guy. What a hell of a guy. All right, so we're actually. I remembered to hit record this time. We're live on TikTok. I've got the lights on. So, yeah, hopefully we can go through this whole thing without any technical difficulties today. Make sure that the sound quality is working. Yeah, you uh, you ping from green to red, so it's definitely working. All right, we pinged. Yeah, red is bad. Uh, so yeah, right now we're actually drinking. We're still drinking something new. I've never had one of these before. Have you? I have had something similar. So what happened is I asked Matt about what an hour ago, give or take, like that, if we want a beer or whiskey today, and he said let's do beer. And I like any preferences, and he said something light. Well, I completely threw that idea in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> and we are drinking, uh, let's see, it looks like the name of the distillery is Port Orleans Bywater. It is a vanilla bourbon stout, 11% alcohol by volume. Yeah, I am going to forgive you, though, because the company that I work for made these labels. That seems to be a, a, like a trend for the, uh, for the local beer that we buy. Right. And the cool thing is I saw these hot off the press before they even went public with okay. the beer. So I was like, man, I got to try that. And then when you sent me that picture, I was like, hell yeah. Here we get are. To try it. All right. Well, shall we? Shall we? Let's give it a taste. Whoa. That's good. That's tasty. You taste the vanilla? Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. That's a good way to start this yep everybody uh tuning in on the podcast is just listening to us make mouth noises it's wonderful yeah this is the uh the beer asmr channel no mm-hmm. something what like even that. is asmr do you know i it's an acronym i forgot it i forgot what the acronym stands for but basically it's like it's like uh, i'm sure a and s stands for this is auditory stimulation basically what it is okay so they get a uh they turn the gains up on the mic to the max and they'll do they'll make sounds that they think is triggers the pleasure center in your brain it's so like the crinkling of a candy wrapper or the tapping on something and at first it was like just just like trigger noises mm-hmm. and then you know you know, Instagram bunnies got on with wearing nothing and started doing things like licking the microphone and pretending. I know who you're talking about, too. And Snapchat right. won't shut up about her. I don't know who that is. But uh, it's a bunch of them. It's all kinds of different ones. Is it a bunch of them? Okay. Yeah, they have one now that it's a microphone that looks like ears. And they sit there and they lick the ears. What? Yeah, they, they turn into like a super sexual. Okay, Matt, thing. I could have gone my entire life without knowing that somewhere out there there's a company that makes a microphone that looks like ears. I'm surprised you don't know this already. Why would I? Why would Why you? would I know this? <laughs> you're, you're on YouTube just as much okay, as I Okay, <laughs> let's talk about our sponsors now <laughs> before I'm completely traumatized. All right, so first and foremost, we have Unmasked Studios. Unmasked Studio, he's a maker of boutique cosplays. If you don't know what a boutique cosplay is... You're in luck. You can go to Instagram. You can check him out. That is Unmasked Studio without an S. He is on Instagram. He is on Facebook. His cosplays are something straight off of a Hollywood production. They are absolutely amazing. If you can't afford to get one of his cosplays, that's fine, too. You can support him in other ways. You can like his stuff. You can share his stuff. You can tag us in your favorite cosplay that he makes. All these things are going to help boost this guy in the algorithm and get him in front of more eyes so that he can sell more of his awesome cosplays. Yes, sir. Next up, we have StrikeForceEnergy.com. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com and use promo code ATLASSTRENGTH at checkout. And you're going to save 20% on all of your energy purchases. 
really any of their purchases because they do have apparel as well. But they come in little point two fluid ounce packets. Mer- I, you say uh, what? I you say two? You just say ten ounce packets. I used to say ten fluid ounce packets. That's definitely not right. It is point two fluid ounce packets. They come in like it looks like a little crystal light packet. Never mm. seen one of those. You pour it in whatever you're drinking. It's gonna add some flavor. It's gonna add some caffeine, and you're gonna have a good little pick me up uh, that you can take mid afternoon without a huge crash. Yep. Again, use promo code Atlas Strength at checkout. You're gonna save twenty percent. Next up, we have Impact Mouth Guards. Matt's actually wearing a shirt from Impact Mouth Guards right now. Uh, if you are watching us live on TikTok, you can check out that shirt. They have a lot of really cool designs. If you use promo code Atlas Strength Shop at Impact Mouth Guards, you are going to save 10% on all of your purchases. This is actually one of my favorite t shirts that I own. Uh, second to any of the Atlas Strength Shop shirts, probably. Yes, only, uh, only second to the Atlas shirts. That's what we're going to go with today. Um, but yeah, and they also make really great mouth guards, hence their name, Impact Mouth Guards. They send you a custom mold. You bite down on that, send it back in. They're going to put your teeth on file, and they are going to send you a mouth guard that is going to fit you and only you. Well, hopefully only you. Otherwise, uh, uh, you're going to be really hard to identify after the crisis. And I can speak to the performance of Impact Mouth Guard because just yesterday I was pulling over 400 pounds for the first time in quite a while, and I could definitely feel the difference with the mouthpiece in. I can definitely tell, and so I'm, I'm very ADD, so I forget my mouth guard about half of the time, mm-hmm. but I'll be sitting there after my top set racking my brain why it didn't go as well as I had hoped it had would. And you don't have your piece yeah, in. Yeah, it's because I don't have that piece in, so I'm not biting down on it. I'm not creating nearly as much it's pressure. It's crazy how much tighter it makes you. You wouldn't think it would make that big of a difference, but it really does. Makes a hell of a difference. I wish that my brain wasn't so messed up. Otherwise, I'd remember it more. It's not messed up. It's just cluttered. It's just different. It's a mm-hmm. different brain. You know, it's crazy. Being on TikTok, I've learned so... I've learned more about my ADHD being on TikTok than I did years of going to the doctor. I've learned more about ADHD through TikTok than all my years of friends who were popped if, up on Ritalin. If you're on ADHD TikTok, it means you might have ADHD. I don't know how... I don't know how I stumble across these realms of tiktok because that has nothing to do with me but i'm there for some reason i'm on adhd uh tiktok i'm on mill talk i don't know how i got these i don't know places. how you're on mill talk either and i you're like trying very hard to put me on mill talk by sending me mill, mill talk videos well I, I like like one guy's mill talk video and like the next eight of them are nothing but mill talk yes and i take active steps to be not on mill talk <laughs> The worst part is it's all like inside jokes that I, I don't get. I'm not yeah. in the military. I have no idea what you're talking about. It's okay. They're not very funny even if you do get them. Probably not. Most of them anyway. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a couple of uh, army girls that are kind of pretty, but besides them, I don't really. They're probably in the Air Force. I don't know. Probably. I didn't see the branches. All right. Next up, we have <laughs> the Atlas Strength Shop. That is us. We're the ones that do the Atlas Nerds and Iron Podcast. You can support the podcast and support the gym by either coming to the gym if you're living close to the area, or you can use promo code ATLASNERDS10 at checkout, and you're going to save 10% on all of your apparel needs. I'm wearing one of the shirts right now. We've got one with the Atlas Nerds and Iron podcast logo. We've got a, what, probably 15 different designs on there right now, something like that. Give or take, give or take. And first of March, I'm going to drop a few more. Awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to that. But, yeah, use promo code ATLASNERDS10 at checkout, and you're going to save 10% on all of your Atlas Strength Shop apparel. Sounds great. All right, you ready to start talking about things and stuff? Let's talk about things and stuff. All right, so first and foremost, we are going to talk about the Conan's Wheel. The Conan's Wheel is going to be the third event in Louisiana's Strongest Man. This one, it's there's really not a whole lot to say about it. You just pick it up and carry it. Just walk. So you're going to pick it up in the Zercher. Um, unless you are short enough and have a good enough front rack to where you can rest on the collarbone. I have seen a couple of athletes do that. But, yeah, it sets the path for you. You're just going to walk in a circle, Mm -hmm. and whoever walks the most wins. Pretty much. If you go to Iron Podium and look up the Louisiana Strongest Man and Woman contest, uh, as of about 20 minutes ago, I updated the weights for the Conan's Wheel, so you'll be able to see exactly what those weights are. And that is the weight in hand, which means if you don't have access to a Conan's wheel, which 90% of our competitors aren't going to have access to a Conan's wheel, you'll be able to train this in a Zercher carry. Uh, and I would I would probably say most people are going to try to do that with a yoke. 
Yes. Yes. Assuming that they have a yoke. If they don't have a yoke, I've seen people try to do this with a barbell or an axle, too. Probably about as close as you can get. Yeah. Yoke is going to be the closest you can do to simulate this without having a Conan's wheel. Mm-hmm. But a yoke is the next best thing. Now, that being said, if you do have a Conan's wheel, you're going to have to do a little bit of math. When I let's say that it's 550 pounds, which is what the super heavies and the heavyweights are going to be moving, but that doesn't mean there's 550 pounds on the yoke. That is the weight that is in hand. I'm sorry, 450 pounds, or is that what I said? You said 550. Okay, 450 pounds. 450 pounds on our yoke. What that equates to is 10 plates, 10 45 pound plates. Plus the weight of the handle. The handle is 15 feet long. The plates are stacked about halfway down there. So we had to do some math to figure out that that was 450 pounds. I think it might be confusing people. You said on the yoke. I did? Okay. Yeah, you, you, meant, you meant 10 plates on a Conan's wheel. Yeah, 10 plates on our Conan's wheel, on the pins of the Conan's wheel. Right. And then the actual Conan's wheel, the handle weighs 117 pounds. Right. So we actually had to do some math. We figured out on our Conan's wheel... Any weight that you put on the pins, you multiply that by 0.75, and that's the weight that you have. Okay. So if you're training this on a different Conan's wheel, you're going to have to come up with some kind of equation to make it to where it's the same in hand. And that that probably change varying on what... It's going to change for every single Conan's wheel. Yep. Uh, unless Because I don't know of a single company that actually just makes a stock Conan's wheel... Everybody has one that a fabricator made. Yeah, that's how ours was made. Ours was handmade by uh, members of the gym. So, it yeah, if you have a Conan's wheel and you're going to be training on that Conan's wheel, you're going to have to do math to figure out what that weight is in hand. Otherwise, you're going to either severely undershoot or severely overshoot the amount of weight you're training with. Let me ask you this. If you can rig a suitcase scale. Su- suitcase scale, am I saying about the scale that you hang from the ceiling? I don't know of a single suitcase scale that people can that people can just drop money on uh-huh. that is going to get into the four hundred and fifty pound range. No, that's an expensive piece. That's a very expensive piece of calibrated equipment. Okay. Um and I know this because I recently went to a rope rescue class. They had one that they used mm-hmm. to show us how much stress was being put on the rope systems. Right. Three grand. Holy smokes. Yeah. That's probably more than a Conan wheel. Probably. So I wouldn't spend a lot of money on that. Uh, the, what we did to figure out ours is we had somebody light because our scale only goes up to 400 pounds. Mm-hmm. We had someone light hold the end of the Conan's wheel, step on the scale, and then we subtracted that from what he weighed. Right. So like if it's a person that weighs 200 pounds... It came in on the scale at 317. So we knew that it was 117 pounds in hand at the end of it, empty. Right. Then we started adding a couple of plates. And for every every amount of weight that we added, it was 75% of that is what the scale was going up. Okay. So this is probably very hard for people to follow along at home. Uh, just... All I can say is... We're talking is, a lot of math right now. Yeah, load up your yoke, do the best you can, and I th- I think one of the... It, with the exception of very few, it'll probably be a pretty damn even playing field because everybody's going to come at it differently. Yes. Uh, now, all that being said, if you don't feel like putting that much thought into it, we shot for weights that will keep everybody under a minute. Okay. So, if you can walk two minutes, go heavier. Makes sense. I makes think, sense. I think that about covers it. We probably just should have started with that and skipped all the math. Yeah, that, that probably makes things a little bit simpler. True. Yes, but anytime I tell people that, they don't want simple. They want to know how much weight. They don't True. realize how much math is involved in getting that weight. Well, now everybody, you get both answers. You get the complicated mathematician answer, and then you get the simple meathead answer. Just add more weight. And anybody who remembers us with the Hercules holes knows we're not very good at math. No. Hey, look, we just said we were strong. We never said we were smart. We're doing our best. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Uh, Eddie versus Hall. Eddie Hall and Thor Bjornsson boxing match. It uh, apparently is on again. Four weeks from this weekend. Four weeks from this weekend? Yep. March 22nd. 
That sounds about right. Give or take. So I know out of the two of us, you're definitely the uh, you definitely know a little bit more about boxing than I do. A little bit. I'm I I'm a bit of a boxing spectator, not an expert, but you know I do appreciate a good slugfest. So I, I hardly watch boxing, but I do know a few things. Mm-hmm. I know Half Thor has had what three matches since he's all had this started? three legitimate fights, and Eddie has had zero. Eddie has not fought anyone. Eddie has gotten injured multiple times during training. And Thor has stayed healthy and looked great throughout. Yes. He I mean he looks what well, he's he's like right around three hundred now, isn't he? And he's shredded. Yeah, the dude looks incredible. He mm-hmm. looks like an athlete. I never thought I could see a man that big be actually shredded. He is. He you he has a six pack. He's shredded. Well, he's had a six pack before. He had a six pack during the Arnold at one point. Not like this, though. No, not like this. Like, he looks, like, beach-ready right now. I mean, he straight up looks like a, a Marvel comic character. I mean, guy's insane. Um, but boxing-wise, Thor's punches are snappy. His footwork looks like he's been working on it. You know, he, he looks like someone who's been training to box. And I can definitely tell, even from a layperson's perspective, from match the difference between match one and match three, mm-hmm. he's improved a lot. Like I said, man, his 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 punches are a lot snappier. He has, he keeps his guard up even when he's tired. He's more disciplined. He just he's taking this boxing thing very seriously. And meanwhile, like I've watched Eddie, he's leaving himself wide open. Either he is pulling the wool over our face. And is going to show us what Eddie Hall can do in a boxing ring when the fight comes, or he is just he's 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 walking to a fight. He he's gonna lose. <laughs> you know, I I really hope that's the case because otherwise it's gonna be a very boring thing to watch. Mm-hmm. But I'll say this about Eddie Hall: prior to this whole boxing thing, mm-hmm. prior to both of them starting to cut down, actually train boxing. Right. If you would have asked me, hey, who would win a fight between Half Thor and Eddie, I would have said Eddie. Just off a of sheer, just. I get the impression that Half Thor has never been in a fight. But when you're that big, yes. you don't need to. Yes, and that's why. Because even when he wasn't <laughs> World's Strongest Man or a competitor for World's Strongest Man, he was still 6'8". And could probably be freakishly strong. I don't know many people, even drunk, who are going to step up to somebody who's 6'8". No, that's not someone you fight. It's Eddie's six two. He's a big guy, but I know some drunk bastards that'll step up to somebody who's six two. True, true. Now I will say that I might be wrong in this, but Eddie Eddie Hall is supposed to have a boxing background from his younger days. Does he? Supposedly. And from what I remember, he has a bunch of brothers too. Doesn't look like it though. He doesn't look like someone who really has boxing boxing experience. Like, he literally, like, I saw a video where his stance is something like this. And his his punches were slow, sluggish. His comeback, pulling pulling his punches back were slow. He didn't even have a guard. Like, his, his face was just wide open. Think he's just going for that knockout, hoping to end it quick? I mean, if that's what he's going for, good luck. I mean, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you just get lucky and you KO someone yeah. with a lucky punch. But the odds are not in your favor. When when it's someone going against another person who is legitimately preparing as a boxer, the odds are not in your favor. I think one of my favorite moments watching all of this training and all these different exhibition matches, though, it was Half Thor's first match that he did. He was going mm-hmm. against somebody who actually was a championship contender at one point. Yeah, he was. He was uh, in in Britain. He was a legitimate top flight boxer. So he didn't land many punches. No, but he did land one to the shoulder. That hurt. And the dude hit the ground. <laughs> well, yeah, cause, <laughs> because you still have taken and skill matters. Skill does matter, but size also definitely yes. matters. So, like I said, sometimes you just get lucky and connect connect one, and you put someone on the ground. Um, I read a meme the other day. It was uh, shared by somebody who does a lot of jujitsu, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Jujitsu teaches you that size doesn't really matter in a fight." And then the, you sign up for a tournament, and there are weight classes. See, I, I hear that all the time, like jujitsu enthusiasts. And look, I'm not. I've taken a couple of classes, and I definitely appreciate the sport because it is wickedly complicated, mm-hmm. especially when you're going against someone 
who's been doing it for years. To, it's like an entirely different language. It, it's, but to tell me that size doesn't matter in jiu-jitsu, I don't know. No. Like, si- like size I, always matters. Especially if you're just stronger than some, 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 someone. That it, that I caught that. You caught that. <laughs> but especially if you're just like tremendously stronger than somebody. I don't care if you got me in whatever, but if you can't forcibly put me in a position for you to win, eventually I'm going to beat you. Yeah. Now, someone who is close to my size, but also knows jujitsu and is good at it, I'm probably fucked. Maybe, maybe not, because you're also stronger than 90% of the population that's your size. Maybe. No, that's a real thing. I wouldn't know. I, I, I was looking at it earlier. The uh, the average bench press for uh, an American male mm-hmm. is only 135 pounds. What? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. I would not have guessed that. I thought it would be higher. So it's kind of the same thing as liking drawing and mm-hmm. working in a museum. Like, you might be able to draw better than 90% of the people in the world, but because you work in a museum Mm -hmm. and you're constantly surrounded by actual art, it skews the perception a lot. Not only do we spend a fairly large amount of our social time in a gym surrounded by people like Colt Swanson. Who are just stronger than you in every way. (laughs) But we're also on the interwebs. Where and we also have access. Yeah, like, I well, sent you that reel on Instagram, that guy who just completely disrespected a thousand pounds on a deadlift. It's like, yep. good God. He, he repped it. Yep. There are some strong ass people in this world. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that the average gym goer isn't stronger than the average not gym goer. I like to think I'm stronger than average, but. You are stronger than average. I'm definitely, definitely humble enough to know that, man, they're, I mean, I, I train with them. I train with these guys. They are some really just whew, monsters out there. It's like usually what I tell people is I'm the strongest person in almost every room that I'm in, except the gym. Except for this room. Except for the, the gym. Yes. And back in the main gym area, I am no longer the strongest person in the room. And that's really the only place. But see, I'm not mad about that because that just means if they can do that, how close can I get? It forces you to grow. Right. Like, all of my lifts were stagnant when I used to run a snap deadlift. Yeah, and now you're surrounded by people who are stronger than you. It's like you, you want to see yes. how close you can get to that. I'm just, I've experienced the same thing. It's kind of like when uh, when Vegeta met Goku. Yeah, it just pushed him to just be that much stronger. Yeah. Even though Goku's always stronger than Vegeta, Vegeta's like... And, and the manga, I don't think he is right now. I couldn't tell you. I, I'm not up to date on the latest. Neither am I. Like, everything after Super ended, I haven't really been paying attention to. I'm only, like, 55 episodes in the Super. I, I'm having a hard time finding time to watch it, but... Okay, here's what you do. You sell the baby. <laughs> that's that's not gonna fly, my guy. No? I'm pretty attached to her. That's fair. That's She's fair. pretty freaking cute. She has my eyes, yeah, man. Yeah, babies are cute. Yeah, she yells at me as cute. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't know how to talk, so she just yells at me. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, I can't imagine how stressful that must be to like have a screaming baby in your hands. Because one, it's it's probably very traumatizing for the baby because it wants something, but it can't figure out how to tell you what it wants, so it just screams. Honestly, for the most part, we haven't really had that all yeah. ha- happen. I only really remember like one bad night where we just could not get her down. Uh, but NyQuil for the most popsicles. part, huh? NyQuil popsicles. Well, mom has a different solution to that problem. Okay. It's natural. Okay. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Heroin and then nursing. Sure, we'll go with that. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> for legal purposes, that was a joke. <laughs> I do not nurse my baby with illicit drugs, trust me. Uh, my parents who listen to this podcast would be severely pissed off do your parents listen to this podcast yeah they do oh now i feel like i'm um like i gotta mind my p's and q's i don't give a shit okay good. <laughs> fuck them uh <laughs> look i'm i'm married with a kid and i don't care yeah um where we leave off i don't know and i just started thinking about the crawfish boil is not this weekend but next weekend right yeah two weeks from now okay cool cool yeah. So uh, TikTok mind. is not invited. No. 
Well, we're not going to get, we're going to give them a fake address. Oh, we could do that. And we're going to like, they're going to show up and then we're going to have it swatted. Ooh. That's also a joke for legal reasons. Yeah, we wouldn't do that. No. That's... As much fun as a federal penitentiary might be, I don't think I'd do well. No, it's the beard. It makes you real pretty. <laughs> the beard makes you look pretty? Yeah. I'm definitely staying out of prison then. Yeah, you, you should. <laughs> God, this conversation got weird. So, so where did we leave did off? Did you have anything you wanted to add, a, add in for the whole Eddie, Th- Eddie uh, Thor fight? Uh... Well, we want to hear from you guys what you think. I know there's some Eddie Hall fans out there. Uh, so let me know who you think is going to win between Thor and Eddie, assuming Eddie doesn't blow a bicep or something. I think he's going to find another reason to get hurt prior to this so that they can down the road. Like, man, nut up or shut up. Let's go. But, uh, yeah, you and I both agree. We probably think half Thor is going to take this one. I think he's going to win easily. So for the Eddie fans out there that are convinced that Eddie is going to win, DM us and tell us why. I, I want to know. I will say this, though. I think Thor's going to win handily, but by points. He's not going to be able to knock him out. No, definitely not. Because I think Eddie Hall is still a tough dude. I also think that if this fight was happening in a bar with no rules, Eddie would win. You still still think that? I think so. I think if Eddie doesn't care about, you know, lifelong injuries, going to prison, or a rule book... (laughs) I think half Thor is going to go down pretty easily. <laughs> like Ed, Eddie Hall just strikes me as the kind of person that if you piss him off enough, he's going to take your kneecap out. I mean, I wouldn't try it. I I wouldn't. I'm not going to test that theory. Although I've heard from people who have met him, though, he is such a nice guy. I've heard that all the guys, like yeah. despite what you might see on social media, like well, maybe Thor is a little bit Hollywood now because of his role with Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. But I've heard that he's heard actually he's pretty, a super nice guy. Yeah, I've heard that he's pretty nice, but he is still you know, a little bit yeah up on the fame chart. But like Eddie, Robert, Brian, like I know, I say I say their first names like I know them. I don't, but See I've heard that all again. these guys are uh, you know pretty, really nice. Yeah, but Brian Shaw still just I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but I see him compete absolute monster like just gigantic human being capable of displaying a tremendous amount of strength and then I hear him speak it's just like that is not the voice I would have imagined for that kind of person so the impression I get from Brian Shaw is that he's the mom friend (laughs) the mom friend he's the mom friend of their group you think he's the guy that like takes care of everybody yeah like he's he's the guy that when they're all out hey Eddie I know we're having a good time right now, but we got to train tomorrow, so you bet this better be your last one. But hey, guys, I'm going to hey. drive tonight so we all get home safely. Hey, we we, we got to go. We got an early day tomorrow and filming for the History Channel. Could you imagine if you're depressed <laughs> and he decides, I'm going to give you a hug to cheer you up. I'm good. I'm good. You just explode. Yeah, just dead. Death by a bear hug. Just pink mist. <laughs> But yeah, can't you see it? Can't you see that though? Just because he, he's from, he's such a professional. Well, now you say, team. yeah, like I could totally see him. Like yeah. just, just the way he speaks, it's like, yeah, he could totally be that guy. I would love to have like a beer with Brian. He's gonna be the adult in the room yeah. in every room that he's in. I tell you what, he's, a, he's if there's ever a strong man that I'd like to have a beer with, he'd probably be right up there, very easily. So, if I could have a beer with any strong man, it would probably be Martins. Okay, yeah, he seems like a pretty nice guy too. Just got, I've heard him joke around, and our sense of humor is similar. Okay. So I think it'd be a good time. <laughs> well, if I ever, if I ever want to go on psychedelics, I'll hit up Robert O'Burst. Yeah. He likes to trip out. Back to Brian Shaw, I think I'd tell him a joke, and he wouldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, he'd think I was being serious, which I'm kind of an asshole, so that's probably get me in a lot of trouble. You see... I don't know. I don't. I don't ever get mad at your jerks you say just because like I kind of get it. But yeah, you're also you're you're quick witted too. Yeah, I'm also sometimes an asshole from time to time. I've never noticed. Yeah. Yeah. Different strokes. But she said. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yep. Gotta got gotta have different strokes. All right. So yeah, if you think that Eddie's gonna win, please DM us and tell us why. So you just watched the Doctor Strange trailer? Just did. So what were your takeaways from it? Um, looks like it's going to be a hell of a movie. Um, and, and I kind of I kind of had a feeling that when they introduced multiverse, mm-hmm. like it's a real thing in the Spider-Man movie, mm-hmm. um, that it was going to lead like some kind of like 
super ultra chaotic type. You haven't watched any of the Disney Plus series, have you? I've seen WandaVision. Okay, so so you've seen WandaVision. So, so when I saw the Scarlet Witch, I knew who that was. Yes. So, but have you seen Loki? No, it's on my agenda. You have to watch Loki before you see this. I will. I'll, I'll make some room for it. Because a very big part of why the multiverse is the way that it is happens during Loki. Well, I have time. It's only what, like six episodes? Yes. Okay. That, yeah, uh, it's not long. I at have all. time. Yeah. You know, it's it's much shorter than Super. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely so catch watch up. that first. Um. But I'm excited for it. Um, I really kind of started to really like Doctor Strange, the mm-hmm. character. At first, I was kind of indifferent, but like the more I see him, the more it grows. Speaking of Doctor Strange, you're also going to have to watch the What If series. Oh, that's on. I saw that on. I saw the. It is also on Disney Plus. Yeah, I saw the the advert for it. Yep. Oh. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ruin it. But say who, but one of the characters that they show in the trailer mm-hmm. is a character we became familiar with in the What If universe. Okay, I check it out. So it's just one of the multiverse characters. So, did you have any questions about anything that you saw in the trailer? This is your. This is your ask a diehard Marvel fan moment. Ask ask a diehard Marvel yeah. fan moment. Because I've, I've, when I say diehard Marvel fan, I've literally seen every single Marvel property the day it came out since Spider Man One. Oh, I, I know, I know you're committed to the cause. Um, I would miss the birth of a child <laughs> to see Avengers Seven. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have any questions right off the bat because there's, there's a lot to digest. So, so, so basically, like. I'm going to go ahead and guess that because of the event that happened in the uh, Spider-Man movie, like them constantly messing with reality and the meshing of the different universes, that these are the consequences of that. And like basically now Doctor Strange has an answer for all the dumb fuckery he did. So yes and no. And these are better questions to answer after you watch WandaVision. I've seen Uh, WandaVision. Not WandaVision, Loki. Okay. Because... While time is linear, it also isn't in the Marvel Universe. Waffle. I've heard that phrase before, the Waffle Universe. No, I said Marvel Universe. Marvel. I said the Waffle. No, I said Marvel. Where did I hear Waffle from? Did you? I don't fucking Did you hear it? Maybe. How much alcohol is in this beer? Shit. 11%. That, that's quite a bit. Yeah, these are strong beers. They're I'm good. feeling it. Yeah, it's, it's beer that's been aged in bourbon barrels. Oh, I can taste that. Yeah, definitely. It's very good. I'm not in college anymore, so my tolerance is kind of low. Again, that is Bywater Vanilla Bourbon Stout. Um, Made by Port Orleans. So, time is linear, but it also isn't. To certain beings' point of view, all time is occurring simultaneously for all eternity. I'm going to guess those people are like the gods of the... Well, it's this one specific entity that you're going to get to know when you watch Loki. Okay. So because of that, from his point of view, the multiverse has always has the multiverse both has never been and has always been. Okay. So <laughs> did Doctor Strange create the multiverse or did they happen naturally from other causes because they were always intended to happen? Hmm. These are things that like Marvel just hasn't really gone into detail with yet. Well, apparently they're going to. I, we might get that. We might not. They might leave it open ended. Oh, so we may not. We may not get that with this. We may movie? not get the answer. Okay. Now, a big phase four bad guy is also introduced. Okay. In Loki. That I think I might have heard something about that. Uh, it was right up there. Well, it was kind of a bigger moment. Do you remember the end of Avengers during the post credit scene when you see Thanos? Yes. It's a cameo to that level. Okay. Something that, that it's something that they're paying off during uh the Ant Man into our Ant Man Quantumania movie. Okay. That's when we're gonna get a big payoff for that. And then it's just going to get bigger from there because this guy is a serious threat to the Avengers and always has been in the comics. I just wanna know like what what the future of the Avengers is gonna look like. So I mean Captain America is on the moon, apparently. Um, Black Widow's dead. Thor is. Watch 
so do it around. What if. Okay. Because we actually don't know if Black Widow's dead at this point. So yeah. she could still come back. That that's a weird one. Okay. You're gonna have to watch uh want you're gonna have to watch what if for that. Anyway, back to the trailer though. Did you catch the uh the cameo? I I probably didn't. Did you recognize the voice of the guy said, why don't we just tell him the truth? No, I heard that, but I didn't place the voice. That was Patrick Stewart. Really? Yes. Oh, I'm going to have to go back and rewatch it then. As in Professor fucking X. Yeah. So wait, is this, is this where they introduce the X-Men? It could be. I mean, if you got to bring in Patrick Stewart, it cannot be in any other role. So what we are seeing is we are seeing a version of Marvel Comics Illuminati. Okay. Which the Illuminati and Marvel Comics included Patrick Stewart, Doctor Strange, Black Bolt, who's an Inhuman. Okay. Uh, which they've introduced the Inhumans in Marvel, but Marvel is pretending like that never happened because okay. it was a TV. It was a TV. It was originally supposed to be a movie. So the Inhumans, back before Marvel acquired Fox, they were going to try to use in, Inhumans as the MCU's version of the mutants. Okay. Because they're almost the same thing. It was going to be a movie, then things happened, the movie didn't happen, and right. it became a TV series on ABC instead, which everyone hated. Really? Yes. It did not do well at all. It's on Disney Plus if you ever want to watch it. I'm not sure. But uh, Black Bolt's the leader of the Inhumans. Um, he basically, whenever he speaks, he can level a mountain. What do you mean level a mountain? Literally level a mountain. The sound of his voice will level, level a mountain. mountain. Yes. Damn. So like he's whispered at the Hulk and put him on his ass. Hmm. It's he's an, he's a weird character. But so Professor X, Doctor Strange, Black Bolt, Reed Richards, and uh Reed Richards as in Fantastic Four. Yes, as in Mr. Fantastic. There's one more in Iron Man. Tony Stark? Tony Stark. Those are the in those are the Illuminati in Marvel Comics. So sounds like Professor X is going to be part of there. Mm -hmm. There's rumors that we're going to see a Captain or not Captain America. An Iron Man variant. Not not Tony Stark. It's okay. going to be a variant. It's going to be superior Iron Man. That's the rumor that we're getting. And rumor has it that Tom Cruise is going to play him. Tom Cruise in the MCU? Tom Cruise was originally up for the role of Tony Stark before they gave it to Robert Downey Jr. Kind of glad he didn't get it. Me too. It would not have been the same series had he gotten it. Robert Downey really killed that role. There's also rumors that John Krasinski is going to play Mr. Fantastic. I, re I really like John Krasinski. Everyone likes John Krasinski. How can you not like John Krasinski? Like, um... The running joke, though, is we've already seen him in the MCU because he was uh, he was Agent Wu in, I, in WandaVision. Mm -hmm. He was what? He was Agent Wu in Oh, I, yeah, I saw, yeah, because he's <laughs> the guy who played Jim on, yeah, messing with Dwight. Um, but, yeah, dude, I, like, I still go back to that with John Krasinski, that movie 13 Hours. Like, Such a good movie. Fucking awesome. Such a good movie. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but, yeah, so rumor has it he's going to be playing Mr. Fantastic. Nice. We, so we have Doctor Strange, and whether or not Disney decides to do anything with the Inhumans, who knows? Well, I feel like if you're going to do anything with the Inhumans, then you might as well just say, fuck that, let's do X-Men. Well, the Inhumans and the X-Men are two different species. Okay. The Inhumans are not the mutants. The mutants are not the Inhumans. Disney now owns the rights to both since Disney bought Fox. I feel like it... I don't know. I feel like the smarter play. If you're gonna like, if you're gonna have Professor X. Yeah, yeah. They're they're definitely going to the the X Men are coming. Okay. We they, we just don't know how they're coming yet. And there's theories. Are you familiar with the House of M storyline? No. So the House of M storyline, essentially, Wanda makes Wanda winds up with children. Okay. She finds out that their that her children are actually shards of a demon named Mephisto. She loses her mind and erases ninety percent, ninety six percent of the mutant population with the words "No more mutants." What well, am? And they basically use Wanda having a psychotic break mm -hmm. to reset the Marvel universe every few years because her powers are that powerful. Huh. 
there are rumors out there that the MCU is actually taking place in a post House of M storyline. And that's why we haven't seen mutants in the MCU. Because they're all dead. She's already gotten rid of them. No, they're not dead. They never existed in the first place. Uh. Because she's a reality warper. Right. So the rumor is that Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness takes place in a post House of M storyline. And Multiverse of Madness is going to essentially be them undoing Wanda's Wanda's so Wanda will reverse the the mutants and bring them back Damn, that's, that's a, how we're going to get the X-Men into the MCU that's a lot of explaining to do yes You're gonna, that, that's to be a lot of conversations <laughs> well I mean we just did it in 10 minutes yeah but I mean like to put it in theaters so where the, like, the general public can get it I like, think I think the general public is a lot more has a lot more knowledge than a lot of people think they do. Really? Because there's a lot of people like me out there that have spent the last, you know, 20 years reading comics and diving into the lore and figuring out what's going on with these characters. Right. Like anytime anytime the MCU introduces a new character I've never heard of, mm-hmm. I go and I find out their entire backstory. Really? Yes. Cool. <laughs> Just cuz I want to know who these people are. I want to know how they're going to use the characters. Yeah, you know, like I knew that, um, like I knew Agnes was going to be Agatha Harkness since the very first episode she appeared in. I, I would have never guessed that. Yeah, I would not have known that. Like I was like, she's the bad guy. I'm about to find out who this person is. I guess I could probably call myself a casual fan. Like yeah. I really like it, but I don't know all like the deep intricacies of the storylines. Mm-hmm. Crazy how much story there is. There's so. I mean. Marvel Comics has been around since the 50s. Sounds about right. I think what, Spider-Man was the first one? No, Spider-Man was not the first one. The X-Men were the first. Really? I didn't know that. Well, technically, the Fantastic Four were the first. And then even before that, I can't remember the name of the company prior to Marvel. But the Human Torch appeared in a pre-Marvel Comics comic, but he was a different character. Okay. It's kind of hard to explain. Timely Comics. That was the name of the comic. comic so he was right the Human Torch, but he wasn't he was what we Torch, know as. He wasn't the Human Torch. Right. Yes. But like, but DC still has another, you know, 20 years on Marvel. Yeah, DC's been, like, Superman's been around forever. Since 30s. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably, like, America's first, like, superhero. I don't think he was America's first. Really? I want to say the Phantom. Was around before Superman. Hmm. I don't know if that's accurate though. And the Phantoms had a movie before too, in the nineties with Billy Zane. The Phantom. The Phantom was a character. Uh, basically, imagine a purple Batman that lives. I in was the about to ask you, did he wear purple? Yes, he wore purple. I remember the trailer for that movie when I was a kid, but I never got a chance to see that movie. You should see it. It's so cheesy. <laughs> It's called The Phantom? It's called The Phantom. It's got Billy Zane in it, and he fights pirates. Is there any chance it's, like, streaming? Because I kind of want to watch. I don't know if it's streaming or not. I want to look uh, it up and watch it one night. But, yeah, like, and he rides a horse, and he's got a pet wolf. The horse. I remember riding the horses. Yep. I don't remember the wolf, you know, though. carries two pistols. See, that's the kind of movie I would, like, stay up late on a Saturday night and, like, get drunk to and watch so it. Good. But, uh, or it's... It's good because of nostalgia, because I remember watching it with my dad when I was a little kid. Right. But the premise of the Phantom was it was a it was a mantle that was passed down from father to son. Okay. Over a period of like 250 years or something. So everyone, like all the natives thought that he was an immortal ghost mm-hmm. because they've seen him die and then he shows up again. Right. Yeah. You know, so. But just the next generation. Yeah, he was a legend. I remember the trailers for that movie, but I never got to see it. Yep, that started off as a comic strip that came in the newspaper and eventually became a movie. Man, when you brought that up, I just had, like, so many flashbacks. Yeah, I just unlocked a core memory. Dude, like, the big, like, the, the one that I'm thinking of is, um, you know, I, you know, I grew up in Pierre Park. Yeah. Small little country town. The video rental stores, there was two of them. Mm-hmm. But one of them was in a trailer, like mm-hmm. a literal, like, trailer and we would go in that's where we rented movies and like i used to rent movies and uh video games for my super nintendo 
I never rented anything for Super Nintendo. I rented for N64. And the game that I rented for the rented the most for Super Nintendo was a Spider Man game. For Super Nintendo or N sixty four? Super Nintendo. Because we have it for the N sixty four. It wasn't N six I never owned an N sixty four. Spider Man sixty four was the first game I ever bought with allowance money. Really? Yep. Okay. And as a result, when I got that N sixty four that we had here at the gym for a while, mm-hmm. I went on eBay and I found Spider Man sixty four. Nice. Because I wanted to play it. I have an N64 at the house now. I acquired it some kind of way. I don't know how, but I have it. Do you have GoldenEye? Maybe. I have to go look. I think that might be in there. Because that would give us two copies of GoldenEye Mm -hmm. two N64s. Ooh. So we could pull the trigger on the GoldenEye tournament. Ooh. I need to go go check. There's a TV here. There's a TV in there. We can make this happen. And I think I have a couple, like, at least two controllers. I have three controllers that work. I think we can make it happen. Now I haven't fired it up. I'm I'm not sure if anything will turn on, but I have it. Yeah. I think we can make this work. If you'd be down for a golden eye tournament, please uh please let us know. Yeah. I think we can make that happen. We can definitely make it happen. Old school golden eye, not this reboot that's I wonder the reboot that they made. Did they I didn't know they online? I know they made a reboot. Yeah, they made one. Like with modernized Xbox. graphics and yep. all that shit. Yep. Huh. And they use Daniel Craig's face instead of Pierce Brosnan's, which I don't know how I feel about. Who? Which one? Daniel Craig or Pierce Brosnan? Oh, I know who Daniel Craig is. Yeah, that's the blonde hair guy. Yeah, Daniel and Craig is the most recent James Bond. Bronson is. He's the one that I grew up with. He's the one that I know. Yes, Pierce so. Brosnan was the guy before Daniel Craig. Right. And then before him was Sean Connery. No. Wasn't Sean Connery? No. It's gone. Let's see if I remember this in order. Pierce Brosnan, George Lazenby. Um, I'm sorry. Why did I say Pierce Brosnan? Sean Connery, George Lazenby, uh, Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton. I feel like I'm missing one. Pierce Brosnan and then uh, Daniel Craig, but I feel like I'm missing one. There's a there's supposed to be a new one. There's there's another guy that's about to be they, the new. They haven't announced officially who's playing James Bond next, but the most recent James Bond movie was the last one Daniel Craig is going to be playing. Right. Yeah. Um. What's his name? They they said that this is who it should be, and I kind of agree. The black Idris Elba. Idris Elba is too damn old. Yeah, but it's Idris freaking Elba. I would love to have seen him five years ago. I'd still watch it. Well, if you you, you got to think about you it. You can like, CGI him five years younger. Like. I, Idris Elba, he's in his forties too. Eh. You know, if if you if you hire somebody to play Bond, you're hiring somebody to play Bond for the next ten years. True, you do need kind of a young guy. Yes. Now I'll tell you what I wish they would have done, but unfortunately he's dead now, so we'll never be able to do it. Who's that? I would have loved to have seen Sean Connery come back as Bond as an old man Logan type storyline. See, that would be awesome. That would have been so cool. That would have been a badass. Like Sean story. Connery come back as an 80-year-old James Bond. That would be sick. And and make it raw and gritty. Like something like No Country for Old Men. That I saw that movie for the first time like a few years ago. I would watch that movie over and over again. Like a, a, a new Sean Connery James Bond. You can't do it, though, because you know he's dead. I remember growing up for Christmas one year. My what brother. That? Is that water? This is water. Okay. It's lying in straight vodka. Water. This is water. What a pussy. <laughs> hey, man, I got, I got a heavy squad day tomorrow morning. That's true. Yeah, you need to, you need to start hydrating. Um, my brother brought my dad No Country for Old Men on DVD, and I was still kind of a kid. Uh, so my dad was like, you're really kind of young for this movie. <clears throat> 30 years go by, and I forget about it. And it was streaming one time. And I watched it, and now it's like, wow, that was an awesome movie. I've watched it once, but it's been so long since I've seen it that I hardly remember anything about it. I just remember the feel of it. I remember he told me you don't want to watch it because it's it's a sad movie, like because the ending is kind of sad. Because like, and then then when we got to the, I watched the movie and enjoyed it, and we got to the ending, and I saw the ending, and it's like, well, shit, it is sad. (laughs) Some, Some movies are supposed to be sad. Like but it was just a really like, well done movie. Like you're not supposed to walk out of Logan in a good mood. I did. Did you? I just really just appreciated the movie. Like it's like it was fuck, a very yeah, good it was movie. A fantastic story. 
But they basically made it to where nobody could ever play Wolverine again. Except for Hugh Jackman. Well, I mean, Hugh Jackman, he's too old, too. I would, I would love for him to come back for one more movie, but if he came back for one more movie, that would be all the Wolverine that we would ever get. But who do you who do you cast? I have no well, idea. Well, with the MCU, because of the multiverse, doesn't necessarily have to be Hugh Jackman. True, anymore. and well, I mean, it never did, because if they if the X Men, if you bring them into the MCU, it's going to be rebooted. It would not be the original. It would not, be. except for Patrick Stewart. So Patrick Stewart is... But hell, he's old, too. He's really old. But they're variants. You need to watch Loki. Okay. This is a, this is a post-Loki conversation. All right. All right I'll but, watch uh, Loki. Essentially, Loki made everything canon. The <laughs> Fox X-Men movies. Um, the S- Spider-Man movies from the 70s. Really? Yes. Like... It it re it, it solidified the idea of the multiverse. Okay, that everything has happened within the MCU. So the like the MCU is part of the Marvel multiverse. Earth six one six, which is the comic, mm-hmm. is part of the Marvel multiverse. See, like, like the way they're doing this whole thing, it's just it's very it's, meta. Is but it's also just genius. It is like. The possibilities for what you can put out there are literally unlimited. Well, here's where it really gets interesting. Speaking of limited, they would never be ballsy enough to do this. But, of course, I said the same thing about introducing the concept of a multiverse 10 years ago. DC has a multiverse, too. If you say merge DC with MCU. In the comics, Marvel exists as a multiverse, as a universe in the DC universe. And DC exists... As a universe in the Marvel universe. So you're saying we could get a Capcom DC versus Marvel in theaters. We could. Fuck, I'm about it. It's possible. <laughs> I'm, we're never going to, but it's possible. <laughs> but like, um, so after Crisis on Infinite Earths, which mm-hmm. was a, it was a huge crossover that happened in DC that reset one of their timelines. Right. That was smooth. For those of you listening along at home, uh, Matt just spilled water all down his shirt. Well, then there was a few drops. Not that bad. But uh, so Crisis on Infinite Earth was a huge crossover event that reset the DC universe. Okay. In that, the Flash died. Barry Allen died. Huh. He he basically sacrificed his life to save everyone. Okay. Is that where he, like, hit the speed force? It's where he he ran so fast. He ran so fast that it reset the timeline, and he essentially disintegrated. Yeah. Shortly thereafter, in Marvel, there's a character called the Runner whose entire goal was to find all of the fastest characters in the Marvel Universe and make them race. Mm -hmm. Halfway through the race, this dude with amnesia, with long blonde hair, a long blonde beard, and what looks like a tattered red Speedo (laughs) just shows up. Runs past all the Marvel speedsters like they're standing still and wins the race. The Flash. He has no idea who he is, but he says his name is Buried Alien because it sounds right. Barry Allen. Yes. Flash pretty, pretty. He shows up there and one more time in another story and it's just never again. Huh. But he is crowned the fastest man alive at Marvel. <laughs> Because he just shows up and just dusts all their speedsters, which makes sense because their most uh, their most notable speedster is Quicksilver, who runs about the speed of sound. It's pretty damn fast. Yeah, but Barry Allen can run several trillion times faster than the speed of light. That's not even fathomable to the human brain. No, he he can. The biggest speed feat that he talks about is that he can process thoughts faster than an auto second. Which an auto second is the time it takes for the speed is it's the time it takes for light to travel from one end of a proton to another. One end of a proton to another. Yes. Which is a microscopic distance. Yes. <laughs> That's how fast he can process thoughts. I couldn't tell you what that like I No one can. It's impossible to comprehend. 
It's like the vastness of space. You couldn't tell you how big space is. My brain can't it, tell you. It's large. It's quite large. That's what she said. I hate you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it, it, you know we could get a Marvel versus DC someday, which I really hope they would never do, because realistically, there's no way that Marvel could touch DC as far as power. Well, DC is owned by Warner Brothers, right? It is. Warner Brothers is never no. They would never that do up. that. They're never gonna give it up unless for some like financial reason they're in such a shithole. DC bought Warner Brothers. Or, I'm sorry, Disney bought Warner Brothers. That's right. what I meant to say. Which, given their track record... They could. It's not exactly impossible. Speaking of DC, um, have you been following the new Batman movie? The one with Robert Pattinson? Yeah. It looks interesting. I'm on the fence of whether or not I'm going to go see it. Uh, I probably won't see it in theaters, but I'll definitely see it. I, so if I do see it, it will be in theaters? Mm-hmm. I can't picture myself walking out of that theater in a good mood, though. You think you don't think Robert Pattinson's going to do well? I can't see Robert Pattinson as Batman for the same reason that I couldn't see. Um, shit, what's his name? The singer for Thirty Seconds to Mars, Jared Leto. Yeah, Jared Leto is the Joker. See, I think Jared Leto could have been a good Joker if he would have just just played the character of the Joker instead of doing this weird like gangsterization of the oh, character. Here's my problem. Specifically with Robert Pattinson. There is no amount of CGI that will make me believe Robert Pattinson could kick my ass. Well, it's funny you say that because leading up in leading up to the development of the movie, apparently Robert Pattinson refused to work out for yeah. this movie. He refused to put on a muscle to play the role of Batman. I forgot what his reasoning was, but it was something stupid. Um, but it's like, dude, like Bruce Wayne is huge. Like this is not a small person you're talking about. Like Christian Bale wasn't small for that role. Christian Bale was one ninety. It's one ninety is a yeah. is a is a big person. He was solid. One ninety, I wouldn't want to get in a fight with a one hundred ninety pound Batman. But uh like Ben Affleck caught such flat. Why? Because he was Ben Affleck. I thought he played the Batman role. He did incredibly. Yeah, I thought he did just he fine. He was an awesome Bruce Wayne, and he was an awesome Batman. I think he's probably one of the better... At... He was the most... Next, next to Christian Bale, he's probably the best... He was the most comic-accurate Batman we've got. Right. Like, he was 100% comic-accurate. The problem was he played Daredevil, and Daredevil sucked. Daredevil was terrible. People held that against Ben Affleck, even though Ben Affleck had nothing to do with the writing or directing of that movie. He was just playing a part. I don't think he really did a bad job playing that role, though. He didn't. It was I, just a bad movie. Yeah. You know, like, that movie had so much potential. And, like, they even had a writer from the Daredevil comic work on that movie. And it didn't do well. Yeah, hmm. Kevin Smith was a writer for uh, for the Daredevil comic for a while. Really? Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's something a lot of people don't know. I did yeah, not. The guy who, uh, the guy who wrote the line "You never go ass to mouth," <laughs> wrote for Daredevil. <laughs> oh, that guy is funny. Yep. I, I I actually sat down one night to watch Clerks with Heather. She could not get into. That I can't movie. imagine like any woman our age being into Clerks. It, it was being streamed on TV. I said, "Look," I said, "I've seen the second one, but I never saw the first one." The first one's a classic. I want to see the first one. I thought it was hysterical, and like she's like, "This is the stupidest shit I've ever seen." <laughs> she did not. She wanted no part. Like halfway through the movie, she's like, "I'm going to bed." I love okay. that. My, my girlfriend fucked. My girlfriend sucked thirty-seven dicks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Heather did not want any part of that movie. He follows her out of the parking lot. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> that movie was great. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I might go home and watch it tonight. So, what's your favorite Kevin Smith movie then? My favorite Kevin Smith movie? Yeah. Oh man, I know of Clerks. Is that the only one you've seen? I mean, tell me other ones. I, I don't. Right. I don't know. So you've got Clerks. You've got right. Clerks too. Seen those? Obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, 
You have Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I haven't seen that. Jay and Silent Bob Rebooted. I haven't seen that. I don't remember if it's called Rebooted. Jay and Silent Bob, the Jay and Silent Bob movies, they were kind of hokey. Mm. Uh, but they were good. I very much enjoy them. Uh, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher are actually both in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Okay. Yeah. Now, how do you get Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher in that so movie? So Mark Hamill plays a character called Cockknocker. <laughs> top, top knocker. Cock knocker. Cock knocker. Okay. Yes, you heard it right the first time. <laughs> uh, the, so the premise of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back is essentially they find out that there is a comic book that was written based on their lives, uh-huh. and they're making a movie about the comic book that is based on their lives, but they haven't been paid. So they're trying to go to Hollywood to either stop the movie or get their movie check, one or the other. And when they get there, oh, and the movie is loosely based off of Star Wars too. And Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill plays the bad guy in the of movie. Of course, of course he does. Which I don't know if you knew this, but he did the voice of the Joker. That I did know. I um, which when I first found that out was so weird to me. Yeah, he's done all kinds of voice work. I saw like a like a, a sheet of all the voices he's done over the years. Like Mark Hamill. I mean, obviously Star Wars was huge for him. Yeah. But he's probably made a shit ton more money as a voice actor than he ever did playing Luke Skywalker. Probably. Like his 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 list of the voices he played are. The range is just ridiculous, from like serious dark cartoons to like like two year old kitty shows. Did you ever see the um, the Batman Killing Joke animated movie? Oh, I didn't know they made a movie. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, they made the Killing Joke as an animated movie. I saw and the uh, Under the Red Hood. Yeah, and uh, Kevin Conroy does the voice of Batman in that one, and Mark Hamill does the voice of the Joker. Oh, I need to see and that. It's, it has such a dark tone. It is so. Good. I saw the one um, where Batman is old. And Joker's old. Mm-hmm. Talking about Batman Beyond? No, 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 no. Um, I know that one. Batman's still Batman. Are you talking about um, the Dark Knight? The Dark Knight, yeah. where he fights Superman. Yes. Yes, that's the one that Batman vs. Superman was based on. I figured that, yeah. But, uh, all right, so anyway, we were talking about Kevin Smith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you've got, you know, you've got uh, Jan Silent Bob, Jan Silent, or you got Jan Silent Bob Strike Back. Mm-hmm. The reboot is him going to find his kid, if I remember right. I saw it once. It was okay. Uh, Mall Rats is my personal favorite one. I don't think I've seen Mall Rats. So what's cool about the um, about the Kevin Smith movies is they all take place in the same town and they all take place in the same universe. So they have a lot of the same crossover characters. Okay, like Jan Silent Bob are in Mall Rats. Right. Um. So is the char- there's a character in Mallrats that owns a comic book store, and he's the guy that writes the comic mm-hmm. that Jay and Silent Bob are in that get turned into a movie. Like it's all like, inter- but Mallrats is very very funny. I need to watch that. Uh, there's one called Chasing Amy, which was a, an attempt at a more serious movie. That I think I, I might have seen that. I really enjoy that one, but it didn't do that well. Uh, mm. That one was about Amy was a lesbian. And Ben Affleck winds up hooking up with her. I think I've seen that. And, like, he gets mad because he thinks he's the only dude she's ever hooked up with because she's a lesbian. And he, it, it it's a weird movie looking back on it, but I really enjoyed watching it at the time. And Ben Affleck is in that movie? Ben Affleck is in that movie. Ben Affleck and Kevin Smith are really good friends. Oh, really? Yes. I would not have put them together, but He's okay. in a lot of their movies. He was in uh, Jan Silent Bob Strike Back. He was in Mallrats. Uh... You know, he he's the guy that actually recommended plays Daredevil. Huh. Yeah. Um uh, let's see, what other movies were there? We talked about clerks, talked about the mall rats, we talked about uh there was a movie called Red State, which doesn't take place in the same. That one was a satire based on the Westboro Baptist Church. It was a horror movie. A horror movie. Yes. Based it, on the Westboro Baptist Church. Yes. So imagine the Westboro Baptist Church meets Hills Have Eyes, starring um, God. What's that guy's name? Uh, John Goodman. John Goodman. John Goodman. Holy Snikes! Yes. As the Hills Have Eyes, Westboro Baptist Church guy. Yes. So, like, the premise See, of that movie opens up these two kids who are like in college uh-huh. answer a Craigslist dad to go and have a threesome with this woman in a trailer park. <laughs> 
and that winds up being the bait where they're like captured and they're going to be sacrificed and they have to like escape. From see, I kind of want to see West that Bay because Baxter. John Goodman makes a hell of a villain. He does. He makes one son of a bitch of a villain. He does. I uh, just don't watch it with Heather. It's graphic. Okay. Like I do not picture her enjoying it at all. Especially. Well, I'm I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. Like over the top graphic movies, eh, not necessarily my thing. Okay, well don't watch it then. Okay, fine. I'll uh, I'll YouTube some parts maybe just yeah. to get the feel for it. Yeah, you know, just be over there and be lame, I guess. Yeah, yeah I'll do that. So, wow, we are an hour and five minutes. That was fast. Yeah, we just got on. Like we haven't talked about anything that's on our notes over there in probably about forty five minutes. But we hit all those points. We did, and then we went off on tangents about Marvel movies and then Kevin Smith movies. And then John Goodman being a murdering Baptist. All right, so anything else you want to talk about today, or should we go ahead and take it home? Uh, oh, we, we are missing one point. Let's save that. We're in an hour and five minutes. All right, we'll save that for later. Uh, if you want to know what point that we are talking about, though, uh, Matt is going to be pinning an article tonight that is going to go live on the website next week. Um, I am. And that'll give me a chance to read up on it, see what your thoughts are on it. and uh, We'll discuss it next week. Yeah, we can talk about it in a little bit more detail, and that'll be the meat and potatoes. Sounds great. All right. Rehash those uh, Rehash those sponsors. That's the word I'm looking for. One more time. Right. First and foremost, we have Unmasked Studios. You know him. You love him. Go to Unmasked Studio, Instagram, or Facebook, and check him out. He's a maker of boutique cosplays. Make sure you like his stuff, share his stuff, save it to your Pinterest folder. Tag us in your favorite cosplay that he makes. I love to see it. Next, we have StrikeForceEnergy.com. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Use promo code ATLASSTRENGTH at checkout. You're going to save 20% on all of your energy needs. Get you some energy. Don't crash. Support a veteran-owned organization. All that cool stuff. Next, we have Impact Mouth Guards. Do you like your teeth? I like my teeth. Protect your teeth. Use promo code ATLASSTRENGTHSHOP at checkout. You're going to save 10% on all of your mouth guard needs. And they got some cool apparel and some uh, athletic tape as well. Excuse me. And last but not least, we have the Atlas Strength Shop. That is us. We are the Atlas Nerds and Iron Project. Um, the, the Atlas Nerds and Iron Podcast, and we are in a gym in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, called the Atlas Strength Shop. If you want to support us, either come to the Atlas Strength Shop one Saturday. Uh, we get started at 10 a.m. every Saturday for Strongman Saturday, or you can go to the website and use promo code Atlas Nerds 10 at checkout and save 10 percent on all of our apparel. I designed it myself. He's pretty good. Pretty good. I know a thing or two about a thing or two. You do have to definitely know a thing or two about a thing or two. Yeah. Apparently a lot about Marvel. Clearly. All right. You got anything else to add? I think that wraps it up, man. Cool. Last but not least, don't forget to go to iTunes. Give us a five-star review. That's going to help boost us in the algorithms. And click the share link. Put us on your Facebook page. It'd be really cool if you did. Yeah, share our stuff, man. Get our voice to as many people as you can. All right. Until next week, we'll talk to you then. See you.